Hey there. I want to send you through a very interesting package. It's a bit of a fuller uh, tour of the GPTEL package for Emacs. Um, I use it with org mode, but it can be used with plain text, uh, markdown, and so forth. Uh, from the uh, Cartink, Cartink slash GPTEL uh, repository. Uh, it is on ELPA, so you can use, uh, you can install it with use package or straight use package. It is one of several ways to interact with large language models within Emacs. Uh, it is, um, it's really got the best features uh, for my usage at least. And, and that's, uh, uh, I want to show you uh, what I mean by that. So let's go to a little outline I put together. And, uh, actually just present this. I will do a start presentation with a little package that I have made. Uh, so it's flexible interactive large language model interactions in Emacs. And uh, I had indicated that I might start with an unmodified config. I have not in fact chosen to do that. We're using the, uh, the config that I have uh, laid out already. Uh, it has customizable variables. I spelled it this way because they are in the customize interface. GPTEL, uh, no, I don't want to do that. I want to do customize group GPTEL. And um, we've got, uh, it, it, it lets you define uh, an API key, but it is security forward. <laughs> and so the value menu says you can do one of two things. You can put your API key in literally and have it saved in plain text, really. Uh, or you can call a function that returns the API key. The default, notice this is an unmodified uh, parameter, is uh, to, uh, to use auth source. So get AP, API key from auth source. And in my case, I encrypt that so that it's my, my various API keys that I might be using uh, are all encrypted in uh, authinfo.gpg. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll take a quick look at that uh, in a moment. And then there's a crowdsourced uh, prompts file. I don't find that useful in the slightest to find uh, crowdsourced prompts that you might want to use uh, that all tend to be uh, pretty worthless. Uh, and then the default mode. So this is a really indicate uh, interesting thing here that you are in a document interacting with an LLM as the document is formed by the two of you. Uh, and it doesn't have to be any special thing. It could be flat out plain text. Uh, if markdown mode is available in the Emacs session, then it will say it will use that as the default. Otherwise you can specify a default. And so what I do is specify org mode. Then there's a number of directives uh, these are not very interesting. Uh, I, I use my own uh, list uh, of directives. Directives are system prompts. And then there's a handful of other things that um, I don't think anything is especially interesting to look at other than uh, the response filter function. So uh, there is a way because LLMs by default will will return structured responses to you in markdown format and they know markdown very very well there's a hundred thousand times more examples for training of markdown than there are of org mode so rather than asking or prompting the llm to give you org mode in return which it will mess up uh, you just let it respond in markdown and then have it uh, converted to to, to uh, org mode behind the scenes before it gets inserted in your document. Uh, in this case, GPTEL comes with a, a very small, simplistic uh, ELISP function to do that, but I want a much more uh, powerful uh, version and more complete and more reliable. So I, uh, I live with the, uh, the uh, the requirement that I have, uh, or the prerequisite that I have a uh, pandoc. So the pandoc command is on, and if it's there, then uh, this hook will make uh, use of it, or this function, and it will call pandoc to convert the markdown to org mode. 
All right, that's about all I want to say with that. Um, uh, you actually start by saying gptel command. So uh, I would say, for instance, meta x gptel. And it starts in a, a buffer. And you say can say, what is the capital of Liechtenstein? All right. And send it. And uh, there you go. And then you say, and of Luxembourg. And I did this just to show you that, in fact, uh, it's uh, sending the whole buffer so it has conversational context. This helps you keep the context. When you have it, when you prompt it to respond uh, in code, or if you say any code that you do produce, wrap it in source code blocks, then, you know, because you're in org mode, you can actually execute those source code blocks and then make use of that as part of the conversational context uh, for using the result of that code. Uh, execution. So it's it's really uh, quite amazing. Now, you also have the option of sending just any region of text that you want. So if I say and of Germany, question mark, and I highlight that and send, it will say, it will not tell me what the capital is. It, it doesn't know any context. It doesn't see any of that. Uh, so so then, you know, if I don't have anything selected, it sends the whole buffer or however much context the model can take. So this ability to send only regions helps you with the token limit size of these models. Uh, you secure your uh, API keys using OSSource. Uh, so uh, in my case, I have it encrypted and it looks, the lines look very simple. All they are is machine and the, you give it the Base, basic host name of your endpoint and then password and then the value of your key. Uh, so I've got uh, Together AI and Open AI uh, in, in this example. Uh, you get to select the model and prompt, which I did not show you. Going back here, instead of simply sending the buffer, I could say Control U, C, Return. And I have a transient interface, which is what's used in Magit. So where it, where it says dash, M there, you actually say dash M. And then, oh, you want to use chat GPT models, maybe I want to choose a different model of that, or do you want to use a different uh, provider altogether, like Together AI and one of its models, uh, and so forth. So, uh, and then you can se select your uh, system prompts and so forth. Uh, as I say, transient is if you if you use Magit on a daily basis, like I do, then it's it's home home to you. But it is a weird interface, uh, very powerful, uh, and uh, not a terrible choice for GPTEL. And you can have your conversation in a, a Markdown org mode, as we have seen. Um, next up. I would say, let's see. Yes, my extensions include uh, putting descriptions on the prompts. Uh, there is a part of my code where I set it up where I actually set the directives to be a uh, particular uh, function that I wrote uh, to load them all in. And I want uh, gptel directives. Okay, now they show up correctly. So there's my auto expert. And, and, you know, these prompts are like the way prompts we're doing prompts these days, <laughs> where they're uh, quite verbose compared to, uh, to uh, older versions of it and, uh, and can be really, really helpful. You know, if you're just in general chat mode, it, it almost doesn't matter what your system prompt is. But if you have very specific purposes for it, then, uh, then it does make a difference. Okay, and then I did my own markdown to org function, as I said, and use completing read for prompt selection. So GJG select system prompt. Uh, I added this as my own function to, uh, to, to select a prompt and have a little bit of uh, descriptive text around it in a, in a description. I'm thinking about uh, putting a, a pull request in for that because I find it a very useful feature. Then uh, additional built-in, they're built-in but amazing features. 
Uh, you can save a conversation to revisit or continue later. So check this out. If we go back to our chat buffer, uh, there's no file associated with it, but I could say Control S, let's like, like save it, and save it to uh, abc.org. As soon as I do, even before I did that, there was that properties drawer that was added. And so now it's just a, a flat a, a file. And uh, if I visit that file, I'm just in org mode. But notice that it has paid that it has uh, indicated what a uh, state I was in in the chat session before. Uh, so I could say at this point simply say gptel mode in a standard org mode or anything. It doesn't even have to be a previous conversation. But now suddenly I am back in uh, gptel mode with the uh, language model in this case that I last used. And I say, I'll say, but the capital question mark and send that. <laughs> and it says, oh yeah, the capital of Germany because it has the context from before. So you can build out documents with source code blocks, with the execution of those source code blocks, with discussion about them, with uh, basically end up with, uh, through your chat, end up with a self-documenting literate mode source code type of uh, thing. It's just, it's just uh, really amazing and wonderful. So you can send uh, from any text at all simply by selecting the region. Uh, you can redirect the output not just to the current document you're in, but to your clipboard or to other places. Uh, you can rehydrate from a save chat, which is what I refer to it as when I opened that uh, org mode file and then said GPTEL mode. So now we're back in our conversation and you can use completely different endpoints. And uh, as an example of that, uh, I had already shown one of those because I had, uh, I had selected Together AI. Together AI has its own kind of default API, which I could uh, add to, um, uh, to GPTEL, but they also have an OpenAI compatible API, so it was super easy to add that. I actually used GPL tells own function, make open AI, uh, but called it together AI. So that's how it shows up in the little selection menu for the providers. Uh, gave it the same header. I just stole this from what it does with uh, API because you put the bearer token, which is your uh, API key, into uh, an authorization header uh, for, for use with curl or uh, other, you know, or just like the um, URL retrieve uh, function that uh, can be used. And then uh, everything else is the same except for the host. That's how it looks up the key, the uh, protocol that you use, and then the endpoint that you stick together after protocol and host, uh, and then the models that I use on that, and that's it. That's as simple as it can be. Uh, hopefully this was informative. Again, looking at uh, where you go, if you're not starting from, uh, you know, just an Elpo uh, repo, I recommend going through to uh, Cartink GPTEL on github.com and looking through it uh, to understand uh, all of the features, uh, including some of the things that I haven't uh, covered in this. And then if you're interested in my uh, specific uh, extensions, you can go to Gregory G slash GPTEL and look at my fork, specifically the Gregory G branch. All right. Hope this was useful and that it will uh, improve your uh, productivity and fun in Emacs and org mode and Markdown and whatever else. All right. Thanks. Till the next one.